The Kyber Crusade Imperial World of Raban Lord Mogwar directed the Kyber Crusade to the Imperial planet Raban. The world was an active war zone as the Imperials fended off attacks from the murder cursed from Fleet Quartus. Spies had revealed a large grouping of destroyed knights and other war material in the ash waste. Lord Mogwar planned on salvaging this material, then setting up a clandestine recruiting depot to funnel the recruits into the Stygian Empire on the Khyber Path. Also of keen interest to the Alpha Legion Lord were the Ash Waste Tech Savage Scavenger Tribes. They could prove to be a valuable source of recruits and soldiers for his Dark Mechanicus allies. Lord Mogwar ordered Dravos the Deceiver to head the expedition down to Raban. As Lord Mogwar did not wish to spend the Dark Crusade's strength seizing the planet, this would be a very low-key operation. Gather the material, establish a covert recruiting depot, and then depart without the Imperials realizing. The ongoing war with the murder curse should aid in the operation, Mogwar thought. Dravos landed and seized the site from the Ash Waste scavengers, who were already salvaging the site. Rather than co-op the scavengers, he, and then, he then seized as many as he could and press-ganged them into his forces. The ash waste scavengers who escaped were outraged and informed the imperial authorities of the Alpha Legion activities out of pure spite. Alarmed, the Alpha Legion were joining the murder cursed in the war for Raban, the Imperials dispatched a large force. Spearheading the force was a Crimson Fist battle group. Beastman scouts gave Dravos warning of the Imperial advance. With it went any chance of establishing a clandestine recruiting depot. Still, if Dravos could defeat the Crimson Fists, he could complete the salvage operations. Dravos ordered the attack and then informed Lord Mogwar of the situation. He added that his warp site and the omens foretold of an Alpha Legion victory. At the command of Dravos, the Harkani Cabal led the Harkoni hunters in a pell-mell charge towards the Crimson Fist captain and heavy intercessors. The Cabal's pre-battle rituals filled the cultists with the power of the Dark Gods, and they charged in an overwhelming wave, knocking three of the Gravis Marines to the ground and butchering them. Their axes and blades wounded the fourth, but the Crimson Fist captain strode amongst them, his relic blade hewing through the cultists in his fury. The cultists fought back, confident in the favor of the Pantheon and in the Hellbrute coming up behind them to support them. In the center, Dravos the Deceiver ordered the refusal of his right flank and ordered Konar the Craze to lead a detachment of Sherev Sabotars to attack, while the Vindicator, Dread Devastators, and Squad Alpha-1 poured fire into the stern guard, mowing many of the Marines down. Konar the Craze led the cultists, screaming into the Hellblasters his balefire pike dousing them with warp energy. The Hell Blasters outmatched his force, but Dravos and Squad Alpha One had assured them that they were right behind them, backing his force up, so the cultists fought desperately. Konar the crazed cultists were able to cut down two of the Crimson Fists, but the Marines struck back in a flurry of precision blows against the cultists. Battle cries turned to screams as limbs were hewn off, and Sermite fists shattered the chest cavities of Cultus. Konar, in alarm, looked back for the promised support, but Dravos was still far off. In seconds, Konar was alone, holding the Marines back with his balefire pike. The Cultus who had followed him butchered. Konar triggered the pike, dousing the Marines with flames, temporarily blinding them and allowing him to turn and make good his escape. The Crimson Fists began to counterattack at once, a tactical squad and aggressor swinging into the Alpha Legion right flank. The Repulsor firing into a Vindicator as it came, but its shots failed to punch through its armor. The Crimson Fists advancing failed to see the Raptors plummeting in behind them, weapons at the ready. In the center, the Hell Blasters poured covering fire into Dravos and Squad Alpha One, as the remaining Stern Guard, led by the Justicar, advanced on them, firing rapidly as they had moved, closing the distance. For the Emperor, they cried, and they charged forward. Dravos watched as Squad Alpha One fought against the Imperials. The Judicar cut through them with a fanatic's zeal. Before Dravos could even engage him, the only the aspiring champion was left, and a lone stern guard stood unwounded beside the Judicar, all of them thrusting and parrying blows. 
Meanwhile, on the left flank, a Redemptor Dreadnought stomped forward with a tactical squad behind it to provide support. The tactical squad fired a devastating last cannon blast into the Hellbrute, staggering it and leaving it smoking with damage. The Redemptor opened fire then. Plasma cannon blasts punching through the rents in the armor, striking a power core. A flash of fire and smoke billowed out as the Hellbrute stood motionless. It stood as a wrecked, burning pyre in the middle of the wastes. Meanwhile, the Harkonnen Cabal managed to cut down the last heavy intercessor, even as the commune's warp blade slammed into the Crimson Fist captain, wounding him, bellowing defiance and grief at the loss of his heavily armored warriors. The captain lashed out, his blade sweeping and disemboweling a half score of cultists in retribution. Seeing the left flank in peril, the Vindicator Dread Devastator pivoted towards it and opened fire on the Redemptor Dreadnought. The demolisher shells from the Vindicator punched through the Redemptor's armor and detonated, blowing the Redemptor apart and raining steel fragments into the cultists and marines alike. From behind the staggered tactical squad came the guttural howls as beastmen scouts of the Alpha Legion swarmed around them and attacked. Bestial war cries and pistol fire sounded as the beastmen slammed into the marines. The beastmen's blades hammered into Sermite armor, cutting down two of the tactical marines before their bestial howls of bloodlust turned to howls of horror and panic as the marines butchered them, chanting their litanies of hate of the unclean and the mutant through their helm voxes. Suffering 80% casualties in a mere two seconds, the beastmen turned and fled. The Harkani Cabal, seeing this, knew the attack on the left flank had failed. Firing pistols into the captain, they began to retreat, with the captain cutting down a few more of their number as he, they ran. The captain continued to pursue before fire from the Havocs checked him and the tactical squad's advance. Red lightning strikes flew down from the skies and erupted in a thunderous bang as Lord Mogwar and his Terminators and the Obliterators teleported into the battle. The Obliterators' demonic fire lashed out at the aggressors on the right flank, cutting down one and wounding another as they turned and advanced on the corrupted warriors. The aggressors unleashed a torrent of sacred Prometheum before launching themselves into a swirling melee. The demonic power of the obliterators warding off devastating blows even as the aggressors dodged their own blows in kind as a frantic melee ensued. The raptors leaped behind the tactical squad and the repulsor. The normal screams of their jump packs amplified by the raw demonic power they withheld. The melt -a gun fired and melted a hole in the repulsor's hull that bellowed smoke. The raptors then charged, cutting apart a number of the crimson fists in the savage fury of their charge. Revving chain blades swung, and shocked by the sudden onslaught, the crimson fists fell back from the raptors' terrible blades. Meanwhile, in the center, Lord Mogwar and his Terminators poured a hail of fire into the Hellblasters. Bolt shells shattered helms and blew the Crimson Fist Marines off their feet. Seconds later, Lord Mogwar and his retinue crashed into them, the accursed blades and power fists making quick and grisly work of the Primaris Marines. A sudden flash of lightning saw a ten-man Crimson Fist Terminator squad teleport into the troubled Crimson Fist Center, led by a librarian framed by Psy Lightning. They poured their fire into the raptors, wounding and scattering them as they sought cover from the hailstorm of fire coming at them. Meanwhile, Dravos dueled desperately with the Crimson Fist Judicar. The staff at time met ablaze with warp fire as he swung it down at the Imperial's head. The Judicar brought his blade up and deflected the staff, Aside, lowering his shoulder and with a sudden lunge, body slamming Dravos back. The move surprised Dravos, and he staggered back and brought his arms out to regain his balance. The pouch on his side spilled open, and the spirit stones he had secretly taken on the moons of Kyber tumbled out. Then, before he could bring his arms in, the Judicar lunged with the blade. Dravos felt the searing agony as the blade punched into his chest. He felt a lung collapse and one of his hearts cut in half. He gasped, and the Judicar pulled the blade out and kicked him and sent him tumbling into the dirt. Dravos activated a Vox distress signal and feigned death as the Judicar stalked past. All the rest of his attention turned to his psychic power and the dark gifts. 
but the power of biomancy, he tried to keep his body from shutting down and to heal the damage. Xenox the warpsmith then moved towards Dravos. The Judicar advanced confidently upon him until Xenox mechadendrites burst out from his back, spraying flames and melted rays. Behind Xenox, a Vindicator siege tank rolled up. The badly wounded Judicar fell back. Lord Mogwar and his Terminators fired into the oncoming phalanx of Crimson Fist Terminators and endured the rain of return fire. Meanwhile, a repulsor pulsed up towards them, and they opened fire in it as well, charging into it and inflicting some damage. The left flank was caving in, and the forces on his right flank were stymied. Dravos was down, and he was having a hard time holding the Crimson Fist counterattack in, at bay. A Vox report from his aerial recon elements reported two regiments of Imperial Guard and a third suspected regiment of planetary defense forces were converging on the battlefield. Inwardly, Lord Mogwar raged. Dravos had made a disaster of the entire operation. He could still win here, but the operation itself was beyond saving. He opened a Vox link. All units fall back to the landing zones. Vindicators and Terminators to cover the withdrawal. Units are to recover the wounded and equipment as best they can as they withdraw. Upon reaching the landing zone, forces, forces are to evacuate back to the Shard of Tartarus. As they fell back, Lord Mogwar came upon the badly wounded Dravos, lying in the dirt, splattered with blood. His anger flared hotter as he saw the spirit stones scattered around Dravos. Lord, Dravos cried, raising a hand. Silence. You have failed me, Dravos. Not only that, but I can see from the scattered spirit stones you have withheld from both me and the Legion. A few stones kept as spoils is one thing, but this, coupled with your failure here, are quite another. Gather the stones, Lord Mogwar ordered a Terminator. My lord, Dravos cried. Silence! I should leave you here as punishment for your greed and incompetence. But I won't. Thank you, Lord. I be silent. You are hereby stripped of command. You will not command my forces from here on. You may still attend command councils, but you will not speak unless commanded to. Spirit stones are forfeit. I will use them as bribes to recruit Slaneshi warbands into support of us. You have failed me and the Legion. Worse, you have brought us shame. You will not command or give active counsel again until you erase the shame with your actions. I am giving you a chance, a path to redemption and power. Be grateful. Dravos proclaimed his relief and gratitude as he was carried off to the landing zone, bound for the Medicae, on the Shard of Tartarus. The Vindicators fired a few times, driving back the Imperials, but there was no further pursuit. The Imperials were content to occupy the battlefield and savor their victory. Let them, Lord Mogwar thought. This was the Long War, and there would be future operations and promises of victory lurked there. <laughs>